In this video, I will share with you an exam platform called exam.net, a remote exam platform where you can administer your exams. I personally use it for my topical test too a few weeks ago and I find it very easy to use as well as I have a lot of control in my exam paper. So I'd like to share this with you and I hope you uh, may find it useful. As usual, what you need to do is to pull up a Google browser and enter in the URL exam.net. Once you have entered into the exam.net page, you will have to sign in if you are using this for the first time. Click on teacher and sign in using your Google account. Since you're the first time using it, you will have to register yourself. Once you have keyed in all the uh, necessary information, then you can register. So you will be led into this page the moment you have registered and you are ready to go. So I will go through the different items here so that you can start your new exam. The first thing that you want to do is to start a new exam. You can either click on here or here. So let's try start a new exam. I can enter an exam name. So I'm going to call this uh, tutorial. The next thing here is the uh, setting the exam questions. You are given three choices. First choice is when there is no digital exam question. That means actually we give the, the physical exam paper um, or you can use a PDF. So that would mean for PDF here, it says that you will have already done up your paper and you and then you save it as a PDF and then you can upload it using here. You can choose the PDF and then you can click on open and then it will be uploaded into your exam.net as an exam paper. Okay, so I'm for now, I'm just going to close this. And the next one here is to write exam questions. So let's say you can actually write the exam question here on this uh, paper that is given to you. All right, so let's try to, I will try to now to start writing an exam paper. Yeah, do note that there is a few things that you can use here. There are some very simple editing tool that you can use. Yep. Firstly, you can choose to choose the different fonts and different styles uh, for your for your question paper, and then uh, you can also align them. Yeah, you can do a bit of alignment if you like. Okay, so maybe I want to leave this one in the center and leave this one to the side. Okay, and then um, there is some indentation which you can use um, or you can even use the 1, 2, 3 or the ordered list which is uh, quite useful also. Uh, and the different types of uh, uh, numbering that you want to use. And then here is the different types of bullets that you may want to consider using. Alright, and you can do a bit of editing. You can bold it uh, or eye clicks or underline and uh, some minor editing to do some subscript or superscript and of course the font size yeah so and even changing of colors if there is a need yeah so you can change the color of your text accordingly 
um, for those of us who uh, may want to consider setting our question paper, you may have tables. Uh, you can create tables yeah, for your exam. You can choose to insert an image. You can either drop a drag or you can click on the click on here and then go to the image and insert it in. Yeah, there you go. And when you click on this image, you can choose to align it, whether it goes to the left center or to the right, but you can remove it. Um, there is also special characters that you can use, especially for those uh, maths teachers, I suppose, uh, or science teachers. This may be helpful to you. And here, before you click OK, um, before you're done with the exam, you, have, you can choose to present this question to the students. That means the students can then see the question and then they will answer in a different sheet of uh, 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 answer sheet or we can choose to fill the student's answer sheet or answer area with all of these questions. You have a choice to choose whether you want these questions to be on the student's answer sheet or not. Once you are ready, you can click OK. And here, the next thing you want to do is to uh, go through these different options where you can collect certain information about the students. I suggest that you, you collect the, the first name, the last name, and the email, the class, all right? Teacher name, if you feel that it's necessary, you can do so, all right? Uh, and phone number or student ID. Here, uh, I suggest in our school, we want to know who is sitting for the exam, so please do not toggle this on. Otherwise, you do not know who is sitting for the exam. Okay, so do not toggle it on. Leave it. Yeah, do not touch it. Here, the next thing is where we organize the student's workspace or the student's answer sheet. Right, we give the students the writing area. And in the writing area, we can choose to select if the students can do a spell check. Yeah, so for most of us, maybe we want to give it a no. Yeah, or if you feel that you want to give the students spell check, yes for English, then you can choose that. Do you want to consider giving students the scan handwritten solution with a mobile phone? Yeah, um, here what it means is this. The students can choose to write their answers on a piece of paper and then if I toggle this on, it means that the students can then actually scan their written solutions with a mobile phone and then upload it into the answer sheet. I will show you uh, from the perspective of the students later. Yeah? So if you feel that you, the students need this, yeah, toggle it on so that they can actually take a photo of their work. Yeah? For some students, who do, may not have a laptop to work on, I actually suggest that it would be good that they can actually write all the answers on a piece of paper and at the end of the exam, they can actually scan uh, their paper using their handphone. Next is the diff other options. Number one, do you want to allow translation help? Uh, if we do not need, do not turn it on. Do you need uh, them to have English synonyms? If you don't want, don't turn it on. Yeah, speech synthesis, if you need that. If you do not need it, don't turn it on. Leave that. And we go to the next is the audio files. Yeah, do you want them to be able to attach audio files? Yeah, this is especially for disabled students. Uh, and it may be good if they are given a chance to actually answer the questions using an audio file. But for us, most likely not, right? Under the subject tools, are you going to give the students a chance to do a bit of drawing? Yeah. Uh, or a formula editor? Yeah, this allows the students to write formulas, equations, and expressions. Uh. If you turn it on, then they will have the chance to, to do some formula, formula editing. Um, calculator, 
for me, I suppose maybe for maths subject, you know, you can turn this on. So actually, inside the exam itself, on the platform itself, they can actually access a calculator. And the rest of it, we do not really need it. Here, you can add custom documents. Yeah, we can use some basic mathematic formula or programming. Uh, if you need those, you can turn it on. Otherwise, you can just choose to leave it there. Here, we are allowing them to actually access external resources. So uh, for us, we do not want that. So we will just leave this and do not touch that. The next section is the security section. I suggest that you use uh, any allow any browser so that it will be easier for the students to enter into exam.net. Otherwise, uh, certain browsers that they use may not be able to enter. So click on allow any browser. The good thing about exam.net is once exam has started, the students cannot leave the page that they are working on. If they choose to leave the page, what happened is here we can actually set in such a way that exam.net can lock their paper. As a teacher, you will see in the monitor view if the student tries to leave the exam area. Choose here what will happen for the student if this occurs. If the students choose to leave the exam platform uh, to go to any other browser like to Google or things like that, um, the exam.net allows you to choose what will happen to the paper. Number one, you can choose uh, that the students can give you an explanation but unlock immediately. Or to notify the teacher but it does not lock the student. Or you can choose to require explanation and then it will wait for 30 seconds and then it will lock. Or you can choose for it to uh, require an explanation and then wait for 60 seconds. And there are a few other different options there. Or you can choose to turn it off completely. Um, in my last exam, what I did was I told the students if they choose to get out of that platform, they will be locked out. I did not tell them how long. So I actually set it without letting them know that they are uh, they will be locked out for 30 seconds. That means 30 seconds wasted. Yeah. Uh, once you are done with all this setting, yeah, don't worry if any of this setting, you can come back to it later. You can start by creating the exam. At this point, you have completed setting up an exam paper. In this tab called the exam list, you will be able to see all the test papers that you have set, including the one that we have set earlier on called the tutorial exam. So the one that we did earlier on tutorial exam, I can choose to open it and edit the content. If I want to change the content again, I can go back here to change the content. Or any of the settings that I have set before, I want to change them, you can do I can do it here again. And once I am ready, I will click Save. Once you have done all your necessary editing, you are now ready to administer your exam. In the next tutorial, we will look into how to administer the exam, as well as looking from the student's point of view, the exam.net platform.